Hi, I'm Ruth. I fostered twins when they were five months old and then I went on to adopt them. I was always open to taking siblings, uh, but my previous placements were both single children. But when they rang and asked me to take siblings, I was happy to do it. Uh, the first time I met the children was late at night. Uh, I had a phone call in the afternoon to see where they take them. And then I ran around mother care trying to get all the equipment together. And then the social worker brought them to me at about half eight, nine o'clock at night. But they slept really well that night and I thought, this is wee buns, I can do this. But little did I know that they were switched off, they were withdrawn. And once they started to get a little bit of attention, they woke up. <laughs> and I haven't slept since. <laughs> Over time, I fell in love with them. They're, you know, they're, once they started to develop and thrive, you felt a sense of pride about how well they were doing. Um, and they're just very cute. You know, when you're out and about with twins, you get a lot of attention and, oh, we've got twins and you've got twins and people want to know about them and talk about them. And so you really just, it just develops over time, the bond with the children. Well, over time, I really did hope that they would always be there, but with a very drawn out, contracted case and it took over five years. So you always hold a little bit back thinking, is this going to be? Nobody would ever give you... No, we could ever give you a reassurance that the children were going to stay with you. Because of the courts and everything that went on, it took a long time. So I think really only when we were adopted last June, I never really felt wholly sure that I was going to get to keep them even if I wanted to. I definitely wanted them to stay in my life, but um, it would have been devastating for the children to move on after having lived in my house and called me mummy for five years. I just don't know how small children could get their heads around that. But also for me, I would be totally lost without them. I mean, they're the centre of my universe. I think it's important to keep them together because it gives them a sense of their past as well. It gives them a link with their other family. Uh, so hopefully, you know, I'm hoping they'll always be close and they'll always talk and share each other's confidences and not keep me out of the loop too much. <laughs> Explaining Adoption and fostering to my family is easy because we are a family of fosterers and adopters. My eldest sister has fostered for 25 years or more and my youngest brother has two adopted children. So anything goes in our house. Everybody's welcome. Everybody calls granny granny. <laughs> I think if you're considering adopting and fostering, if your circumstances allow, please do try and consider siblings because it's really important to the children you know that they are adopted or fostered together because it just gives them support emotional support from each other and if they come from a difficult background they've maybe only had that support from their siblings uh, so you know to split that up and take that away from them it can create lots of problems in later life well, especially with twins I mean I think it's awful to split twins up I know sometimes circumstances that happens, but um, other examples of children I have met over the, over the years, you know, maybe an older sibling and then two younger ones. I mean, for the older one to lose the younger ones, it's massive, it has a massive effect on them and, and vice versa for the little ones to lose that sort of mother figure and an older child. It just must be so confusing for them, you know. Having their name changed has meant a lot and I think it kind of brings it home that they are actually mine or they are adopted now as opposed to fostered and not to have to say I'm their foster mummy, I'm their mummy. And also in school not to say they can't be in that photograph, they can't be in that video, they can't be in that. Especially over lockdown where a lot of the school plays were videoed and put online. Well then, you know, they weren't allowed to be videoed when they were fostered. So, so now I'm just like, take their pictures. Put them in any video, <laughs> you know. And it's nice for them because they don't feel left out. You know, if you have to keep opting out of photographs because you're a foster or whatever, it's, it's not nice for the children because they feel different. Uh, since they've been adopted, they're definitely more relaxed and not as uptight about a lot of things. And COVID really helped us with that because we had a long time to settle in and become attached to my family. 
So we have twice yearly contact now and I'm more than happy with that and they seem to be more than happy with that. Uh, I think it's important to keep some links. It must be awful to get to 18 and know you have seven siblings out there that you don't know. So I do think it's important to keep contact. Well, I go to, to the contact um, and I have always got on well with the birth mother. Uh, so I quite look forward to the contact now. I quite look forward to seeing how the other children are doing. And, you know, the, the eldest one's 17 now. So, and it's lovely to see there, the eldest, the oldest ones are, they remember having the little ones at home where the little ones don't remember being at home. So, you know, if the contact's not for my pair, it's for the older ones as well, because they're so excited to see them. You know, because they remember having all these brothers and sisters and now they don't, you know, so I think it's really important for them. It's not all about my parents, it's about the other children as well. Mm -hmm.